Hello everybody, it's me, an exotic llama, doing a build guide for a 3.0 Frostbolt Berserker for the upcoming Harbinger League in Path of Exile. Um, it's going to be a fairly short guide, go over gearing, go over the skill tree, which you can see in front of me, and uh, just talk a little bit about the character. Uh, so, why did I pick a Berserker for spellcasting? And uh, if you see over here, and they go through the Ascendancy, um, this is fairly useless. Though if you haven't been hit, you get extra move speed, so that's nice. Uh, but there is Aspect of Carnage here, which makes you take increased damage, uh, but you also deal 40% more damage. And uh, generally, that's more valuable than an extra link on your main skill. Um, so, whenever you compare that to another Ascendancy, uh, generally, that extra da that more damage is going to be more valuable than pretty much any other Ascendancy, unless you're doing something like an Inquisitor. Uh, then up here, you get damage leached as life and damage leached as mana, and extra damage leached as life and mana if you've killed recently. Uh, so when you're mapping, it's going to be permanent uptime, 3% damage leached as life, 3% damage leached as mana. Um, this is probably the number one part of Berserker, and unless it ends up getting changed in the uh, patch notes that are still unreleased for 3.0, uh, I see Berserker Spellcasters being one of the number one ascendancies for like any crit spell build uh, out there. Because if you rely on Leech, you pretty much, like, you need to find some form of it. And the only only other real form of Spell Leech is Warlord's Mark. Especially after the uh, Mana Leech from Vingtar got removed. And uh, Warlord's Mark doesn't have as much of a range as would be comfortable. Uh, so if you walk up to a Reflect mob and you, like, end up off-screening it or something like that, whenever you have a Blasphemy Warlord's Mark up, you're just going to end up taking a lot of damage. Uh, whereas with this, it's permanent uptime regardless of how far away the uh, projectile travels, how far away you're dealing damage, it does not matter. Um, plus, it allows you to Blasphemy other things, uh, other curses, uh, so that you deal more damage. And then there's Cloaked in Savagery, which just allows you to Leech Tank. Uh, you can do that pretty much regardless of having Cloaked in Savagery if you have enough damage and Fall Pact. But 100% damage leeched as life is incredible. And 50% increased damage, uh, both of these being conditional, if you've taken a Savage hit recently, which is like a th something that removes 15% of your max life. Um... Well, I mean, 50% increased damage is pretty good. That's like uh, four nodes of value, pretty much. Um, so yeah, that's that's really nice, even for a conditional thing. Uh, if you don't really care about Cloaked in Savagery, you're already leeching enough. You can alternatively go for Warbringer, uh, just to give you Warcry duration, Warcry uh, cooldown speed, and extra recovery. Or uh, Rite of Ruin, so that you take you know reduced damage if you've killed recently, and uh, gives you stun immunity. Uh, which this build doesn't actually have normally, so this might be a good alternative. Uh, but the 6% reduced damage taken if you've killed recently uh, helps combat the 10% increased damage taken from Aspect of Carnage. Uh, so there's Berserker covered, the Ascendancy. Uh, the only other Ascendancy I'd probably pick would be Inquisitor, uh, just because it's a crit spellcaster build, and the uh, Inevitable Judgment is always fantastic. Critical Strikes ignore enemy, monster, elemental resistance. Uh, however, it is a Berserker. Okay, starting down here in the Marauder Tree, you get a lot of life, and some people don't like to take these nodes, they'll instead choose to path up this way, and uh, I've already looked at like the different variations of choosing this path or not, and it seems to be worth it uh, just about every time to get the extra life down here, and not go that way. Um, then you can come up here, you'll pick up some life, pick up life, uh, some spell damage, you come into which there's some crit, some uh, extra crit and a power charge, which are now more spell damage uh, with the 3.0 changes. Yes, this is using the uh, all the current values from beta. Uh, then you come over, get a uh, crit strike multiplier. Down here you get more spell crit, more crit, some life, vol pact, life, crit, 
and then all of acrobatics, which is really nice, all the way down to phase acro. And uh, power charge here. You've got two jewel sockets at the very least. You need to have these two for frozen trail. Uh, but I also pick up an extra jewel socket here, here, and here, uh, just for life double crit multi. Um, those are some kind of expensive jewels, but they're reasonable. They're not four mod. They're not mirror worthy kind of jewels. Uh, you know, things that would cost you an absurd amount of money. Um, so this is like a starter level character. I, I'm using gear that I think is reasonable to obtain if you're an experienced player. Uh, so this is level 90 build. Uh, going up to 100, you'll end up picking up a lot more life right here. You'll pick up some life uh, down here in these nodes or down here at herbalism. Uh, and then there's an extra jewel socket. So there's jewel socket get herbalism, and that puts you all the way to level 100. Uh, so, without pushing it, going all the way to 100, because um, 90 is fairly achievable, uh, you have 6.4k life, and uh, just about 560k DPS, though that number should actually be a bit higher. There are some things that's not being taken into account yet. Uh, so I'll go into the skills now. Uh, you're going to be using Frostbolt with increased critical strikes, Spell Echo, Controlled Destruction, Slower Proj, and Empower. And uh, if you don't want to use Slower Proj, alternatively, you can use something like Cold Pen. Or, um, yeah, I think, yeah, Cold Pen seems to be the, uh, the, the only thing that you could uh, really use otherwise. But Slower Proj is fine, uh, especially with the Frostbolt Jewel. Uh, as it does give you extra projectile speed uh, per second. So it gives you 40% increased projectile speed per second, some mad acceleration there, and you have two of them, so it's 80%. Uh, so over the, like, one and a half second duration of Frostbolt, uh, it speeds up quite a bit, and you'll still off-screen with uh, slower proj on. Okay, so on to the gear. Using a Doriani's Catalyst. It's a very... Nice beginner's weapon. It's going to be kind of expensive to start with, uh, since it is a fairly rare drop from Atsiri. Uh, probably the rarest drop, aside from a Mortal Hope. Um, but it's fairly achievable. You can start farming Atsiri yourself with this build, if you want to. Um, and, you know, eventually you'll end up getting one of these. Otherwise, you can just keep mapping and uh, buy it from another player. And it shouldn't be that bad. And eventually you can get a better scepter, uh, or even a better dagger, if you want to. If you want to use whirling blades instead of, like, shield charge. Um, but this is really hard to beat, especially whenever you're on a budget. And it even gives you some extra leech. Uh, so if you just look at the stats, it's about 122% LE damage with some extra global crit. Then attack speed, which is useful, uh, actually having local attack speed on a weapon is very good for shield charge because uh, that acts as a more multiplier for your shield charge's attack speed and the 8% uh, increased cast speed also ups your DPS and whatever you socket into it will get LA Prolif so I don't think there's anything you can really make use of there but uh, you know I'm sure someone can come up with something creative uh, then onto the shield this is a pretty good shield. It would actually be really expensive, I think, uh, but it's just spell damage, life, spell crit. Uh, you know, if it's a more budget option, if I go down to this shield, I can just lower the spell crit to a lower tier, lower the spell damage quite a bit, lower the life a bit, and yeah, that's a much more reasonably uh, achievable shield. Uh, then I've got a Sarkonja's hood with no enchantment for Frostbolt. Uh, the two enchantment options pretty much equal. It's whatever you want to pick, and uh, it doesn't make that big of a difference. Then there's Belly of the Beast. Uh, of course, lots of life, 35% life, and it covers up some of your Ellie Res problems. Uh, also, your gloves. Uh, I forgot to craft these, but you're going to end up wanting a Essence Crafted uh, right here. Essence of Insanity Crafted Gloves with life and anything else you can reasonably get. Uh, so with this, you'll end up getting 16% more attack and cast speed. You throw in shield charge there, and your shield charge will just go a lot faster. 
Uh, plus, it'll mean your shield charge is a four link, which is useful uh, because arcane surge now exists. Uh, so the next next things boots are just life resist move speed move speed very good stat. Uh, your amulet is just gonna be you know life whatever. Uh, eventually, you can use a plus one curse amulet instead of a plus one curse Doedri's damning ring, and uh, that'll open up a ring slot so that you can get like a life damage uh, opal ring. And then I've also got a reasonable opal ring here, which is just life on it. And then a leather belt with just a lot of life. Uh, you know, your resists will be covered through these uh, these items, pretty much, as well as your shield. Um, so they're not capped down here, but they will be capped, you know, in-game. You'll want to do that. Uh, then for the flasks, uh, generally I'd run a life flask here. If you don't want to use a life flask, you can always use a silver. And the silver will give you about 70k more DPS. Pretty significant. Uh, and extra move speed, extra shield charge speed. Uh, so it's something to consider, um, but I would generally use a uh, bubbling of staunching here. Uh, okay, and then the diamond flask, just to get your crit chance up there. The crit chance kind of, it's not that great on this build, um, but in maximizing DPS, you know, you, you drop some crit chance nodes. If you wanted to change it up, I can show you a way to do that if you want to get closer to the crit cap. Uh, while lowering your DPS a little bit, just so that things feel more consistent. Uh, but then the other flasks are at Series Promise, because it is it's great. It's just... it's Yeah, okay. Uh, Wise Oak, um, because you just want to max your cold resist somewhere. You make your gear, uh, give you some extra cold res. Bam, throw on that, and uh, yeah, you, you start penetrating um, resistance. And, uh, yeah, that's more damage. Quicksilver of Adrenaline. An Alchemist Quicksilver of Adrenaline, actually, because who doesn't love move speed? And this gives you 81% alone. Uh, so that's real good. Uh, then the Cobalt Jewels that I showed and the Frozen Trail Jewels. Um, another alternative for your amulet would be a Choir of the Storm, though they are going to get kind of expensive in the next league. Uh, it will help you get closer to crit cap, especially if you add more lightning resist to your gear. Um, but basically, the crit chance is increased by uncapped lightning resist. Um, so however much lightning resist you have above... Uh, well, you get negative 30 on this amulet, and then you just start adding from negative uh, 90 to wherever you are. However much lightning resist you have to cover that gap... Um, like, in total, total lightning resist on gear adds uh, to critical strike chance. So, in most cases, it's only going to be, like, 150 to 200% crit. But 150 to 200% crit is, like, all of these nodes and all of this... The, all of these nodes, even. And, like, an extra power charge, pretty much. So, the difference in damage is pretty significant. Uh, and it would change things up a little bit. Uh, but yeah, this is the build. Uh, keep it here on screen a little bit longer. Uh, like I said, if you want to change things up a little bit and go for uh, uh, higher crit, then you can go up here, pick up Arcane Potency, and then you can even come down for like Purity of Flesh because this is pretty efficient, uh, especially if you don't have more Chaos Res on gear. Chaos Damage is something you want to, uh, you know, lower... And uh, so you can do that. Uh, or if you didn't want to use the plus one curse amulet or anything, you can go up here for Whispers of Doom. Uh, but picking up something like this will... It only really increases your crit chance by like 2% here. So it's not a huge difference, and you give up quite a lot of life to come this way. Um, but, you know, if you only care about DPS, you're only running like shaped strands or something like that, or trying to do boss kills uh, with your Frostbolt build then, you know, that's an option. Uh, also, I thought I should show off, um, I'm using an Assassin's Mark and Frostbite on Blasphemy. Uh, then I've got 30% of my mana unreserved. Uh, I've got Blood Rage and Summon Lightning Golem, uh, because even though Frenzy Charges aren't nearly as good anymore, um, I am still using them. I'm using Power Charges from the Assassin's Mark. And then, um, yeah. 
uh, still getting 12% cast speed is pretty good at the cost of Blood Rage. I mean, it can be a level 1 Blood Rage. It, it really doesn't matter. Um, and then Shield Charge, which is Shield Charge, Faster Attacks, Fortify, Arcane Surge. Uh, now, the Arcane Surge isn't currently being added to my DPS total uh, for whatever reason. I'm not actually sure. Um, but yeah, it is... I, I don't know what level. I don't know how to suggest that. I haven't looked at the tables for this, Jim. But I do know you want to use it. And uh, deciding to level it and get more damage there um, is ultimately up to your shield charge's mana cost. Which, in this case, it might actually be worth leveling your shield charge to 20 just to increase the mana cost of it and make Arcane Surge uh, have more uptime. Uh, but as I said, I'm using you know Frostbolt, Increased Crits, Spell Echo... Uh, with an Empower level 4. This is These are all the numbers with 21, 20 gems. Um, so, you know, if you want to be a bit more reasonable, you can lower it to, like, 18, level 3 Empower, and you'll lose, like, 30 to 40% of your DPS, but that's just what gem levels do. Uh, yeah. So that's the first of this week's build guides. I'm... If you have any questions, feel free to throw them in the comments, or if you have any suggestions, uh, though I think this is pretty much optimal, um, you can also leave those down below. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you're also as, as excited as I am for 3.0, and uh, I'll see you tomorrow.